Hey all and welcome to Hogwarts Legacy. Today we're going over five different secrets the game doesn't show you and you do not want to miss. First up, how to open up these puzzle doors and get into their secret loot rooms is actually pretty simple once you understand the code. You'll find a bunch of these scattered throughout the castle in Hogwarts Legacy. For example, this one is in Ravenclaw Tower. But when you walk up to them and hit interact, for me that's E, PlayStation that's Square, Xbox that's X, it's going to reveal two math problems. Don't worry, pretty simple, just addition and subtraction. The number in the middle of the triangle, or that's in the middle of the circle, that's in the middle of the triangle, is what you're trying to work out. So you're given one number plus a creature plus a question mark. The creatures are on the outside of the door, as you can see. The main difficult part is realizing that it starts at zero, not one. So this guy down here is zero. One for the unicorn has one horn. Two for this guy has two three for the three-headed hydra and all the way around till we find the spider that has eight legs then we have to work out one plus eight is nine we need four to make 13 so then we got zero one two three four we need this owl on a stick i think is what it is now to find the question mark and the double question mark code entry spot just We're hit ready. revelio at the door and it will reveal them even if it's through walls this one's clearly pretty simple that one's the double question mark spot and here's the single one so we need to go find um code number five keep clicking through till we find the owl on a stick repeat the process for the second equation we have 13 plus 3 is 16 so we need 5 which means 0 1 2 3 4 5 we need the crab if that even is a crab not sure what that is once you've entered the code correctly you'll be able to open the door and you'll find a smaller chest which generally gives you like a schematic or some currency and then you'll find a bigger chest which can give you legendary items it doesn't all the time particularly when you're on a lower level but it's generally good gear regardless of its rarity. It's always better than the current item that I'm wearing at least. Also just one sneaky trick. If you want to make a save before opening the door, you can actually just open the door, find out what loot you got. If you're not happy, reload that same save and then do it again until you get the legendary item you want because you can only open those doors once per game. They do not reset. So you can abuse the save file system if you want to. For the second secret, trying to find all of the field guide pages is going to take quite a while. There's tons of them. They're scattered all over the place, including outside the castle as well. But there is one way to find them a lot quicker. The game does Rebellion. explain to you how Revelio does make them appear in front of like the statues and the monuments and stuff like that. But it doesn't actually explain to you that little bell noise that plays when you cast Revelio near a field guide page. Yeah, little bell noise that you keep hearing around the place is actually nearby field guide pages. If you cast Revelio and you hear a noise, if it's really loud and soon after you cast, it means it's really close to you. But if it's a little bit further after you cast, it's kind of quiet. You can actually listen to the direction that that noise is playing and it actually guides Revelio. you to that page and it'll get louder as you get close to it. If you're trying to go for all the field guide pages, get all of those rewards for the cosmetics and the XP as well. This is going to save you a ton of time. Increasing your backpack space in this game is really important. If you're also a loot goblin, you've probably run out multiple times already, and then you only realize when you're trying to loot a chest, and then it stops you. Then you only get two options in that situation, selling the gear you don't want, which the vendors are usually too far away, or destroying the gear you don't want, which gets you nothing in return. You also want to keep that uh, inventory clear for quest rewards, because you won't get them in your inventory if it's already full, which does kind of suck. Instead, once you make it to Hogsfield in the storyline, which is the first town they take you to after Hogsmeade, so pretty early on, you'll meet Nora Treadwell, who'll introduce you to the Merlin Trials, which are just a bunch of small puzzles scattered throughout the map, which they don't actually explain, reward you with increased storage space for your gear. But you do have to redeem it for it to actually work. So go to Menu, then Challenges, then Exploration, and click on the ones you've actually completed, then you'll actually get the increased gear inventory. Finding the trials is actually pretty simple. Just open up the map in any area you've already explored. They'll just show up on there with a little feather slash leaf icon. And you can just focus them all at once if you want to just max out your storage straight away. The one thing you will need though to activate the trial, you need Mellow Sweet Leaves, which they do explain in the quest, but just in case you forgot, they don't give you enough to do all the trials and give you like five or so. You can loot them throughout the world, you can buy them from Hogsmeade, or you can just grow them in the Room of Requirement. For our fourth secret, if your gear stats-wise looks horrific and mismatched, and that isn't your aesthetic, which, by the way, if it is, I rate it, but if you didn't know, you can change the appearance of any item of clothing you're wearing to look like any of the clothing items you've discovered before, including collection rewards, and all the skins that came with pre-ordering the game, the uh, Dark Arts pack, which by the way looks particularly sick if you're going the evil Slytherin route. To edit the appearance, just hover over the gear you want to change, hit F on the keyboard, which I'm pretty sure is an arrow key on controller, otherwise just hover over it, it should prompt you with whatever key it is. That'll bring up all the options you currently have unlocked and you can flick through them. That way you can look as coordinated or as scuffed as you'd like, whilst keeping your best stats you currently have. And our fifth secret, how to open the monster eye chests. It's never explained in the game, unless I completely missed it. 
regardless they drop 500 coin each which is a lot of money in this game and there's quite a few of them around the castle so they're definitely worth hunting down basically all you need to have done is progress enough in the story to unlock the disillusionment spell the one that lets you go invisible and then sneak up on the chest i tried it once after the chest had already seen me and made it's like little alert animation thing and then it didn't work even after i'd gone invisible so go invisible first then walk up to it hit interact like any other chest and then bam easy 500 coins times however many chests you find you can't actually like farm the same chest it only opens once per character unfortunately but still a ton of money compared to all the other methods in this game if you guys know any other hogwarts legacy secrets hit us up in the discord or on stream both linked down below and uh subscribe for more hogwarts videos until next time have a fantastic day adios